Hello and welcome to Business Today. This is Palak Agarwal. I'm joined by Pascal Delos, CEO of Dassault Systems. Hello, Pascal. Hello, Prakya. Yes, welcome to Business Today. Thank you. So you have recently uh, expanded your Pune R&D facility in India. How big is the Indian market for you right now? And I also want to understand how much is the global uh, output, the engineering and product output, is coming from India. So, to, to make it simple, um, India is around 5% of the total revenue of the system, but it's 25%, a little bit less than 25% of the total number of people. Hmm. And we can say right now there is no one single product we do without having a line of code which is coming from India. Wow, that's great. And what is the uh, most important sector in India for you? So, we are in India for the last 30 years. So, mm. we started, uh, obviously, with aerospace and defense mm. and expanding in the, into the transportation and mobility, specifically the auto sector. Mm. But much more recently, we are growing extremely fast in the infrastructure. As you may know, the nation is, the nation is building the complete infrastructure for the, you know, for, for the trade, for the electricity, the energy, for all the transportation, whatever, the rails and we are playing in these fields. And we are betting that also the pharma sector will become a very important sector for the future. Okay. Is the aero defense sector the uh, biggest for you in India right now? It is equivalent with the, aeros with the auto sector because those are the two core industries for the Dassault system anyway. You know, mm. we started 40 years ago and worldwide we started with those two industries at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you share some examples because uh, the salt is positioning itself as a, a 3D experience company. So can you uh, touch upon a few examples, maybe yeah. from the defense sector or the automobile sector? Yeah, we, what we do, we try to virtualize the world. So what does it mean? It means most of the competitors, you know, what they try to do is to digitalize. And digitalization is basically when you mimic the reality. When you virtualize, you build a virtual world where you could imagine, you could project, you could simulate, you could do, you could explore all the different options. That's the reason why we started with probably the most complex objects on Earth at the beginning, the ship, the plane, the cars. Because, you know, when you are inventing those new things, you need to look at all many, many different options and you, you need to, do, to look at the trade-off between them. Hmm. So that was the idea. So to make a, a very simple thing, today, you know, we are capable to develop a car in 18 months because most of the car has been designed, uh, built, produced virtually before to do one single thing physically. So this mm. is how we are squeezing the timeline. This is how we are also making possible for all the people to collaborate together. Okay. So does this mean that the production cycle is increasing? And uh, how I also want to understand on the virtual twins, how much is the precision, uh, you know, uh, from uh, a model to precision manufacturing? What uh, are there any loops that we could face maybe in the, you know, and the final outcome? I was seeing uh, the 3D experience center. So that, that I, I got, I was very curious to uh, understand how a virtual, when we are trying and testing on a virtual uh, product, or a virtual, uh, you would say, uh, uh, and a prototype, and how precisely it's, it will be the same while when it will be a final product, yeah. Right now, we are at a point whereby what has been designed virtually will be exactly produced physically. Hmm. So there is no distance. The distance is zero between the two. And the reason is because we are testing against many, many different options, many different things, and we are also looking at the reality. We collect the real-world data coming from the manufacturing systems. We inject them into the virtual twins mm. and we confront them with all the options, all the new ideas we have in mind. So keep in mind, the virtual twin is probably the only place where imagination could be confronted with the reality. Mm. That's how we are making the difference. And the world role is AI or Gen AI is so playing. Gen AI is coming on top of this. Yeah. It's coming on top of this because there are many things we could not only automatize, which hmm. is what Gen AI is capable to do, hmm. again, to squeeze even better or even further the, the timeline for the developments. But I think AI is giving much more uh, possibility to investigate new options. For example, there are new materials where uh, our imaginations 
is um, unable to, to project, unable to create. And AI, and especially the Gen AI, is automatically generating all the different options, mm. all the different possible options. Mm. So why I'm telling you this? Because if you look at the next generation of the battery, for, especially for the car, they will be very different compared to the one we have right now. Mm. And Gen AI is, my view, extremely important to open this new avenue. But there is a but. Mm. The but is you need a Gen AI which is compatible with the industry we serve. Meaning, uh, we could not have hallucination. Mm. We are in a domain where we are flying objects, we are giving drugs to the people, so we cannot take a risk. So what has been automatically produced by generative AI should be trustable, certifi certifiable, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is something very important, and this is how we are differentiating ourselves. And we call it 3D universes. Yeah. So what, what would be the biggest challenge for that? Is it the training or is it uh, trusting or the responsible AI? How, how do you... It's, it's a mix of this. Hmm. It's a mix of this. I think um, there, is a, there is a belief in the industry that to train your AI systems, you need a massive set of data. This is true for the uh, consumer uh, use cases. Hmm. For the industrial use cases, you need high quality set of data, which is very different. Mm. And remember, we started the virtualization of the industry 40 years ago. So we are having already a very high quality set of data in main industry we serve. Mm. That's point number one. Point number two, we have a modeling and simulations capability, which basically means we can generate automatically synthetic data in order to train the systems. Let me give you an example. 15 years ago, we started to work with Tesla. And Tesla, they were developing the autonomous part of the car. Mm. And at that time, not one single car was allowed to be used in a city. It was forbidden. So virtual car, and uh, I mean autonomous car. So what we did, we have built a virtual car, and we were driving the virtual car in a virtual city. Mm. However, we were collecting the real data coming from the autonomous systems. And this is how we have trained um, what you know right now, which is the autonomous system of Tesla. So I strongly believe there is a strong connection between the virtual and the real to make this happen. So many competitors are also building digital twin platforms. So yeah. what is the SOL's uh, differentiation? It's science-based. Okay. And this is making the big difference. Okay. Uh, what we have in our platform is all the capability to modelize and simulate all the science, mm. whatever it's the structure analysis, the thermodynamics, the fluid dynamics, the electromagnetisms, and we could uh, basically couple all those disciplines together. So why this is a differentiation? Because again, in the, in the industrial sector, we have to be realistic with the physics, mm. right? All the products need to be certified. So at the end, you need to produce something which is really behaving the same way it will in the reality. So this is really where we are making the big difference. So you also have major partnerships in, uh, as you said, aerospace, then uh, defense, automobile. You have also um, uh, for, uh, expanding into life sciences and healthcare. Where do you see, uh, how big is the Indian market for that? Right now, it's mainly uh, a market for the generic drugs, as you know. Mm. Um, and it has been the case for the last decade. And we are serving this industry with more the traditional things we do, which is the PLM base, which is how to optimize the production, the quality, the compliance. Mm. But what we see, we see more and more uh, pharmaceutical companies invested in science. And, uh, and it's a bet we are making, and I'm a strong believer, that we will see more and more new drugs coming from, uh, from India, and there are a few reasons for that. One is because if you look at the drug market worldwide, it's extremely concentrated on a limited number of countries. Mr. Trump is making our life difficult with this, as you know. So we see more and more uh, this topic becoming a sovereign topic, which means not only you need to have the production system, but also you need to have the research and discovery which goes with it. And we are probably the only one having both solutions, either to serve the new uh, discovery capabilities, you know, how you could investigate new compounds, how could you evaluate new promising molecules, 
how you could test it in a very efficient way. At the same time, how you can produce it at scale. Mm. So we are betting that this sector will become probably bigger than the aerospace sector in the coming decades. You have, since you have expanded your already existing facility in Pune, how much of the talent hiring are you seeing in India? And uh, uh, I also want to understand the AI talent. Uh, I think that's the one of the one would be the core reason that you have expanded your Pune facility. So how uh, do you see the um, Indian talent and also uh, the startups in India? What role do you see uh, them playing um, in you know the world we are working on the AI and everything? Yes. So remember, we are in India for the last thirty years. Not only to serve this market, but also because also we since day one we have our development lab. And we are here not because it was a low-cost country. We are here because we are betting on the, innovative, on the innovation and the innov innovative capability of the people. Hmm. So today, as I was telling you, it's a little bit uh, more than 20%, between 20-25% of the total number of people at the Associate system. It's growing fast. It's by far the fastest growing. Um, India and the Pune site is the largest development lab we have worldwide. And it's probably uh, the only place where, by the way, we have all the disciplines on everything we do. Now, the AI topic, I think uh, we have to be careful. Because hiring people only uh, being knowledgeable on AI is not sufficient. At the system, we are hiring first engineers. People knowing how to develop cars, planes, right? And then after, we are teaching them how to code, how to use all the different IT systems to be much more efficient, to be much more uh, productive, if you want. Why this is important? Because um, you heard many, many companies telling that AI will replace probably uh, most of the coding. So if you are only coders, maybe uh, sooner than later, you will replace most of your workforce with agents coding automatically without having the human being involved. I think what we, since day one, we always say we want to hire engineers, people knowing how to think, how to imagine new capabilities, how to transform the industry they are working. And I think on this front, we are in a much better way. So for me, AI, it's a set of skills you need to know, like modeling and simulations. But more important, I think we still want to have people having a deep engineering background. Got it. And are you also training young engineers? Of course, of course. I mean, it's part of the... You know, most of the people we are hiring are uh, freshly graduated. Hmm. I think it's, uh, it's the best way. Got it. Um, and the ecosystem is becoming also important for us in, uh, in India. You mentioned it. Um, given the pool of talent that you have, I think, uh, my view, India should become the startup nation. Wow, well, great. <laughs> On that note, uh, if you have to give a word or a sentence to define the next big leap for the salt in India, what would it be? Uh, I want to be the leader for AI for industry. Wow, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.